welcome to wikitiki.com so let's see some interesting interview questions and these questions are asked in many exams too my name is venkat i am a microsoft most valuable professional you are able to see me profile in microsoft.com what is a pump suction head a pump suction head or a suction head in a pump exists when the liquid is taken from an open atmospheric tank where the liquid level is above the center line of the pump suction commonly known as flooded suction so automatically the pump suction will try to pick the water or any liquid from one area to the other area based on the atmospheric pressure Let's move on to the next question causes of overheating in a generator. So in a generator overheating of a diesel engine can be caused by anything that decreases the efficiency of the cooling system. So it can be due to the loss of coolant or low levels of the coolant or poor air flow through the radiators and a defective thermostat. which are some of the few problems that could cause a diesel engine or a generator to overheat let's see the difference between the diesel engine and the petrol engine so the petrol engine works on auto cycle auto cycle therefore on constant volume whereas the diesel engine works on the diesel cycle on constant pressure the air and the petrol are mixed in the carburetor before they enter into the cylinder so the fuel is fed into the cylinder by a fuel injector and is mixed with the air inside the cylinder the petrol engine compresses a mixture of air and petrol which is ignited by an electrical spark the diesel engine compresses only a charge of air and ignition is done by the heat of compression here the compression ratio is low whereas the compression ratio is higher the less power is produced due to lower compression ratio higher compression ratio more power is produced petrol engine is fitted with a spark plug it is fitted with fitted with a fuel injector so it burns the fuel with a high watt volatility so the petrol is highly volatile whereas here it will burns the low volatility liquid also so diesel is a low volatile liquid so these are all some of the differences between the petrol engine and diesel engine why did you choose building services industry as a field this is one of the fantastic question they will ask in the interview So here are some of the different answers. So we will get the opportunity to create something tangible and useful so that our creations will be used by others it gives us the greatest joy. And this point will make the opponent or the interviewer to understand that you are a kind of a service oriented guy. There is some other answer like it's the broadest branch of engineering, so your career options are very open even after you graduate. You can go to defense, civil services, high end R and D, manufacturing, design, energy sector, management, entrepreneurship, and masters. Either M E or M S. So we got a very good career option if you choose this building service industry. So. there are some other answers we can give it for this question easy to imagine and visualize whatever you learn in this it is really practical so our work will be massive machines with massive machines majestic in nature to tiny precision instruments micro nano devices We can go with this kind of answers also. Why did you learn? You will learn how to design and make things ranging from a safety pin to a spacecraft. It's a man's world, but there are few out of the ordinary and brainy girls who took the take up these courses and love it. 
So very few are girls here. These are some of the interesting answers we can provide it for the question, why did you choose the building service industry as a field? Ah, I got some other answers also on payment. You will be getting paid handsomely. After, at least, if you are a fresher, if you are not a fresher and gaining a few years of experience, you will get paid handsomely. This is the final answer and it's a really different one. Developing a range of skills, we will be learning the work of a machine operator. Machinist, your smith, your foundry man, your mechanic, your plant manager, your researcher, and your policy maker. Let's move to the different question. What is the difference between scavenging and supercharging? So, scavenging is the process of flushing out the burnt gases, flushing out the burnt gases from the engine cylinder. By introducing the fresh air in the cylinder before the exhaust stroke ends. That's scavenging. But a supercharging is the process of uh, su supplying higher masses of air and by compressing the atmospheric pressure. That's referred to as supercharging. You're able to see a high pressure of air is injected into the cylinder. To compress the atmospheric air. Now let's see the factors which affect the factor of safety selection. Here are some of the factors. Applied at load reliable G. Limit of stresses that's localized. Loss of property and life in case of failures. This is a very important factor you should understand on safety selection. So, properties of the material which is used for the machine, what kind of material you are using it. The extent to which the assumptions can be solved, how much it will extend, compress or something like that, everything to be solved. The intrinsic property of the service time period, how it will sustain, everything we need to manipulate for the factor of safety selection. Let's see some of the rules while designing casting. So fillets must be avoided for frequent use, that's the first one. Avoid the abrupt changes, it should not change. Casting must be very simple because simplicity is the only key. Ribs and whips used for stiffening, so you should have the ribs over here, you should have the ribs and everything. The curved shape should be used to develop the stress handling. So it should be a curved shape to avoid the stress handling. These are all some of the rules which we have to follow for castings. What is the assumptions which was made in simple theory of bending? That's the question. The assumptions are beam is an homogeneous material which is uniform density it should be uniform density, strength and also having isotropic. So the beam is straight and unstressed while initial stage. That's the second assumption. So the beam can contract longitudinally and expand laterally. It was very large while compared with the cross-sectional dimension of the beam. This one, it should be very large when compared to the cross-sectional dimension of the beam. These are some of the assumptions we have to make it out for the theory of bending. Now let's see briefly about the different types of springs. Springs are classified into various types. They are, the first one is helical springs. In the springs, uh, there are two types further. One is compression helical spring and the other one is a tension helical spring. And the next one is conical and volute springs. The other one is torsion springs. Here is the leaf springs. Here is the disc springs. And there are some additional springs which is called a special purpose springs. These are different types of springs available. Define his law. 
This is one very important question. In case of generating heat between an object in emissions. Hesla states that the heat evolved or absorbed in a chemical process is the same whether the process takes place in one or in several steps. This is also known as the law of constant heat summation. Let's see the final question. List of the various types of fits and explain it. The three types of fits available. One is clearance fit. The second one is interference fit. The third one is transition fit. This category is characterized by the occurrence of so first one is clearance fit. It is categorized by the occurrence of clearance between the two mating parts. One and two on mating parts. The variation between the minimum size of the hole and the maximum size of the shift is known as minimum clearance. Whereas maximum clearance which will have the difference between maximum size of the hole and minimum size of the shift. So that's your clearance fit. If you talk about the interference fit, so here is the one which is connected to other one. In this the mating parts are predefined so that interference between them always occurs. The final one is transition fit. In this fit its mating parts size is limited to a low clearance. You should not have exact fitting so it may break it. You can see the greenish one. That's your transition fit. That's it. We got lots and lots of videos on our Wikitiki channel. You can go to Wikitiki interview tips in youtube.com cc or interview related videos. For school related subs is Wikitiki school and for technology it's Wikitiki technology tutorials. For health it's Wikitiki health and entertainment. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get regular updates from us. And apart from this if you have any questions, comments or any doubts you can post it so that our expert team will answer it. Here is our website and our Facebook details. Thank you from wikitiki.com.